Hey guys, welcome to Shine with Jesse. I'm super excited to be talking with you guys today, as usual, because you guys are all amazing. Um, it's currently raining really, really hard outside right now, so I'm inside and I got bored, so I decided I was gonna make some bread. I love bread making. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but as I'm sitting here, I was kneading the dough and I was thinking about how important bread is in the Bible. It's a very big theme throughout the Bible. Um, it's what gave biblical people sustenance, you know? They, it gave them something to eat so that they could survive and live on. Um, Jesus, when he fed the 5,000, he split up fish and bread and fed people with bread. Um, and Jesus himself was called the bread of life. Bread is a really, really big deal in the Bible. And I was thinking a lot about that, and which got me to thinking about communion, you know? Um, since quarantine, we haven't really been able to come together as a church family and do communion together, which kind of sucks because that's one of the most amazing promises that God gives us. And um, I've just been thinking how I miss my family, you know, my church family. I miss you guys. I miss seeing you all the time. I miss sharing bread with you. And I know that when quarantine is over, the most exciting thing for me when I get to see everybody again is when we get to do communion together. So how did communion start? If this is such a big deal nowadays, what is communion? How did it start? What does it mean? What's the point of it? Well, um, communion, if you don't know what that is, it's when people of a church come together and they eat bread and they take some juice and um, as a celebration of God's promise to us as his people. And so the very, very first communion was kind of strange because we know today that the bread represents Jesus's body when he was on the cross and the wine or the juice uh, represents his blood that was spilt for our sins and so that he can free us from death. And we know that now. Uh, that is knowledge that, that is insider knowledge that we have today. But at the very first communion, they did not know that. The only person who was present, who knew, really knew how big a deal communion was, was Jesus himself. So when they, uh, when Jesus had the first communion, he was in the upstairs of a house of a friend of his. He was sitting with all of his disciples who were his closest friends and they were sharing a meal together. It may have seemed just like a regular everyday night where they were just eating together, but it wasn't an ordinary night. It became the start of a tradition that the church will do for millennia. We have been doing communion since Jesus himself did it with his, with his um, disciples. And I think that's really cool. So on that night, when Jesus gathered his disciples together for the first communion, they were just, again, just relaxing, eating dinner. They're all friends, so they might have been joking around or, or laughing, sharing stories, reminiscing. Um, at that point in time, they were kind of running away from um, being persecuted. And so they were also in hiding. So Jesus, when everybody's upstairs and they're ready to eat, he starts passing out bread. Now again, bread is a really, really big deal, right? It, this is what gives us life, right? It's something that feeds us so that we can survive. Pretty sure it's its own food group. And if it's not, it should be because bread is amazing. Um, but Jesus, he started passing out bread. And as he was giving it to his friends, he was telling them, this is my body broken for you. And they were probably super confused at that point. They were probably thinking, like Jesus was probably a little crazy at that point, saying that bread was his body. Like that's a weird ter term to use, right? We understand what it means nowadays because again we have that knowledge of knowing that Jesus went on the cross to die right to die for our sins to save us we have that knowledge now but they didn't so they were probably thinking this is the weirdest conversation they could have ever had with Jesus saying that bread was his body 
And then, so they all start eating it, and then he passes out the wine, and he says, this is my blood poured out for you. And again, they're probably wondering, what does that mean? I mean, this is wine. Hopefully there's no blood in it. That's gross. What does that even mean? Um, and again, we have insider knowledge that the disciples didn't at that time. We know what the body, what the bread means. We know what the wine meant. We know that that's just representative of Jesus being on the cross, right? And him saving us. We know that. And we also know that at the very first communion, that was the same night that Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest friends. Now that's a big deal. Um, it's a really big deal because Jesus knew that he was going to get betrayed that night. He even told them, one of you guys is going to betray me. One of you guys is going to sell me out and I'm going to have to die because of it. And the disciples were all looking at each other, probably thinking that like, that can't possibly be any of us. We all love you so much. None of us would ever do that to you. None of us would ever want to hurt you. We'd never want to sell you out. We'd never want to do anything bad to you. But Jesus knew that one of them was going to sell him out. And because of that, he was going to go on the cross. He also knew that one of them was going to deny ever even knowing him. Not just once, but three times. He knew that one of his friends was going to tell everybody that they had no idea who Jesus was. And he knew that. And he also knew that one of his friends wasn't even going to believe him when he came back from the dead, when he rose again. They weren't going to believe that it was Jesus. He knew all of this. He knew that he was going to be betrayed, backstabbed. He knew that his friends, some of the people that are closest to him, were going to do some very awful things to him. And yet, despite that, he invited every single one of them to dinner that night. And he gave each and every single one of them some bread and each and every single one of them some wine. And they all got to eat that night. And they were all in the presence of God himself who knew that he was gonna be broken and poured out for them. He knew that they were gonna betray him. He knew that they were gonna deny him and they knew he was. they were gonna doubt him and yet they were still invited to this wonderful meal you see this meal isn't just you know a bite of bread and a sip of juice it's not just food in and of itself while food is definitely a big part of it it's not just that this is the promise that god has given us right this promise that when he died on the cross, it was for every single one of us, even the ones who betray him, even the ones who deny him, and even the ones who doubt him, that that promise still stands for every single person, not just the people who are his closest friends, not just the people who care about him most, but even the people who don't, even the people who deny. And that's a really big deal because that means that it doesn't matter what you and I do. It doesn't matter if we say we love God or we hate God. That promise still stands for us that he is going to be with us, that he died for us, that that is never going to change and that's never going to get taken away. Now, right now, we might not be able to hang out and do communion together. We might not be able to break bread and drink juice together. But the awesome thing about communion is, well, Yes, it's good to be together and it's good to break bread together and it's good to have communion together and fellowship together. All of those things are really good things, but those are not the promise of God. The promise of God is not in the bread, it's not in the wine, it's not in the juice. It's in the love and the sacrifice that God himself gives to us every single day. And so even though we may not be able to hang out together right now, we may not be able to do um, a formal communion where we break bread together, we still get that promise of love from God. And so, if sometime during quarantine you want to break bread with your family, you know that that promise 
stands for you. It stands for your parents, for your siblings, for your aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, grandpas, everybody. It stands for your best friend. It stands for your worst enemy. It stands for the people of God. And God made us all, right? And so I want you guys to think about that promise as we go on in lockdown, as we go on even after lockdown, when we come back and we're able to go and be immersed in the world again, I want you to think about how that promise that God gives us, how it's not just for you, even though it is, and that's awesome, but it's for the people you love and for the people you hate. It's for everybody. And so I want to invite you guys to take communion, even if you don't break bread and you don't drink juice because that's not all communion is. That's a really, really good part of it. But as we go on, I want you to know that the promise of communion is the promise of God's love. And I wanna invite you to take that on as you go on. So I love you guys. I hope you have a great night and I will see you again soon.